we will be going over Outlook Calendar today. So this is the calendar section of Outlook. So the first thing that I want to talk about is your view. So you have the option of viewing your calendar from either the day, the work week, the week, or the month. So your view is right here. So how you want to view your calendar is completely up to you. I'm kind of partial to work week. Okay, so next we have appointments and meetings. So the big difference between an appointment and a meeting is an appointment you're only making that for yourself, whereas in a meeting you can invite someone else. So if I want to put an appointment on my calendar, I can either do it here by clicking it and starting this way, or I can actually click on my actual calendar to make the amount of time that I want to do it. So I could do public training. And then from here, I could put more information in the body of the event. I can put where it's located, where it's going to be, you know, virtual, or if it's going to be in a specific conference room. I can do all of that here. And I can put a reminder in as well to remind me 15 minutes before, an hour, a day before, um, whatever my preference is. So once I save and close that, it's going to be right here. So another cool thing that you can do with some of the um, appointments and meetings is categorize them. So if I have an Outlook training and then let's say I have rent manager troubleshooting next, do you notice how these are both blue? So if I want to essentially color code them into different categories to help kind of visualize exactly what I need to do, I have the option of doing that. So I can put this rent manager, I can do this one as training. So now when I click on this, I can use my training color and here I can use my rent manager color. So this is super helpful if you have a lot of appointments and meetings on your calendar because you can quickly color code them using your categories um, to quickly kind of determine what you have going on for that particular day. So if we want to set up a meeting, it's super easy. Just hit meeting right here. You're going to see this two is now added in so you can send it to someone. So if I want to send it to Ashley, I can do this. You can send training, do the location. I can put more details about the event and the body, any attachments. Um, if we're going to be working on something specific, I can stick that in there. If it's an email with information on it, I can drag that email into this body and have it here as well. And then I can go ahead and send that off. So, do you see how this reminder popped up? That was the reminder that we set earlier. Okay, so next what we can do is that we can also view others' calendars as well. So if I want to see, I could do Lauren Owen, open up her calendar. So if I want to schedule a meeting with someone, it's really important that I look at their calendar first to see what they have going on. So we really want to make sure that we're scheduling events that fit within their schedule. So that's also really important to ensure that your own calendar is up to date with what's going on. So if you, you know, have a meeting or an appointment, um, make sure that that is displayed uh, properly on your calendar because if someone wants to schedule something with you, the first thing that they're going to do is pull up your calendar to see when your availability is. So just to make sure that they're scheduling at a time and date when you are available, make sure that you just keep your calendar updated.
So if I want to schedule something with Lauren, I would pull up her calendar, which is right here, and I can see exactly what she has going on for the week. So I can make sure that I can schedule it in the white areas where she has availability. So you may also notice that she has a lot of private events on her calendar. Um, so I will show you exactly how to do that. So, um, now that I'm done looking at her calendar, I'm going to exit out right here. So say that I have a meeting with someone that I don't want them to see the details of the meeting. So again, with Lauren's calendar, for example, I can see like corporate accounting, um, something with Vista. So I can kind of see what the details are. But if you don't want anyone to see um, the subject of the meeting or who it's with you, can, with, you can make it into a private event. So only the person, the recipient of that invitation will see what's going on. Um, this also applies to if you have something personal going on, maybe a doctor's appointment during um, the work week and you know you don't want that to be um, available to everyone, you could also make something a private event. So I can do a new appointment. Let's put doctor appointment. Could make it for Wednesday. And then I'm just going to hit this private right here. So when I save and close that, you're going to see a little lock right here, meaning that it's a locked a private event. So another thing that you can do is make a recurring event. So some really great examples of a recurring event is to go over your tasks at the end of the day, to clean out your inbox if you have a recurring like check-in meeting with someone you can make that recur every week every two weeks um maybe the first friday of the week so those are really important so let's do one as an example so if i have let's see a new appointment so say this can be review task list so i'm going to do this at p.m. every day so I'm gonna hit this recur button right here so I can choose to have it repeat weekly daily monthly yearly so let's just make this a daily recurrence this is gonna start today and I can choose when it's going to end so it looks like this wants it to end um, January 2021 I can keep it there or I can modify it, it doesn't matter so I'm just gonna hit ok and save and close. So now you can see that it's my recurring appointment to review my task list every day until January 2021. Awesome. So you'll notice that Lauren Owen's calendar stays here, which is really cool. So if I want to open anyone else's calendar, you can search for the person, maybe it's Frick. Um, you know, anyone really within Pan American, you can search and find their calendar here and open it. And once you do that, their calendar is always going to be displayed on this left hand side. So you can always readily um, access it, which is really awesome. So one thing that I did want to mention is receiving calendar invites. So whenever you see it, receive a calendar invite from someone, it's always going to come to your email come as an email and it's going to ask you whether or not you want to accept, um, decline, or propose a new time. So ideally this person should be sending you a calendar invite at a time that works well with your schedule and they should know that by looking at your schedule to see when you are available. So if everything is good to go, what you can do is accept it from your email. Once you do that, it's automatically going to disappear. And then when you go on your calendar, you're going to see that it's here right now. So I can open this up and let's say that, oh no, something came up and now I'm no longer able to meet at this time. What I can do is I can propose a new time right here. So I can either respond back and say that I'm tentatively going to accept it and propose a new time, or I'm just going to outright decline it and propose a new time. So let's say, okay, possibly but possibly i can make it but just to be sure let's just propose a new time 
So from here, I can change it. So let's say it's better to start this at 1 p.m. instead. And go ahead, propose that new time. So it's going to send it as an email back to the res back to the person who sent that invite. Send it now. So now it's marked as tentative and Ashley's going to go ahead and resend at that other time that works best for me. And that is all for Outlook Calendar.